We have made it to the 2024 Major League Baseball Amateur Draft. An opportunity for teams such as our San Francisco Giants to add some big-time prospects to the organization. As it stands now, the Giants have no A potential prospects in the entire farm system. A lack of high-end talent on our minor league rosters leads to a pretty poor future outlook for our team. But hopefully, we can change that by drafting well. Over the last couple of episodes, I've gone through a lot of the notable prospects in this year's draft class with film and highlights to back up analysis. In case you missed either of the last couple of videos where we went over some of the notable prospects, I'll leave the cards to both of those at the top right of your screen. This is our first opportunity to truly shake up this roster. Yes, we've made a couple of trades here and there, but this is my first chance to get my hands on this team and get some guys who fit the future vision of our organization. We own the 13th overall pick in the first round and in every other round. No competitive balance picks because we are a big market team and no compensatory picks because we didn't lose any big free agents last offseason. So the winners of the draft lottery, the Cleveland Guardians, will open things up and their pick is in. With the first pick of the 2024 MLB Amateur Draft, the Cleveland Guardians select Kerry Walls, a right-handed starting pitching prospect from Canada. The Guardians are going to go over the border with Walls, who is the top selection in this series. There are not many organizations who develop pitching prospects better than Cleveland, so Walls is going to be put in an excellent position to develop. With the second pick, the Cincinnati Reds select Tom Buckley, a left-handed starting pitching prospect from Canada. Two Canadian pitchers go off the board to start this year's draft. Our scouts believed that Buckley is the top player in this entire class. I think the upside is there. He's a little bit more raw than his Canadian counterpart, Kerry Walls, but I think he's going to be really good. Craig Hernandez from the Dominican Republic is the third pick to the Colorado Rockies in a draft that is very pitching heavy at the top. We've got three pitchers going with the top three selections. With the early run on pitchers, that leads to the question of when we'll see the first position player off the board. Well, it's going to be here at pick four. Finley Davila goes to the Oakland Athletics. I believed that Davila was the best prospect of this entire draft. I was hoping he would fall to 13. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. The top projected player in the class, Mackenzie Puckett, a third baseman out of Auburn, is off the board here at pick five to the Chicago White Sox. That'll bring up the Kansas City Royals, who pick outfielder Scott Burkett, another guy who was high on our radar for the 13th pick. He's an intriguing center field prospect. The Cardinals at pick seven go with Carlos Pena. I think he was the best pitching prospect in the draft. He ends up being the fourth one off the board. Aaron Luke to the Angels. That feels a little bit early, but you do you, L.A. Sherwood Huber goes to the Pirates. Probably the best contact hitting prospect in the entire draft. Just a few picks away now as DJ Marquez goes to the Nationals. Marquez is another guy who was very high on our radar for the 13th pick, but unfortunately he goes just a little bit before to the Washington Nationals. The Tigers get Freddie Murphy and other pitching prospects we liked, but probably more so for the second round. And Pedro Ortega goes to the Red Sox. Our scouts believed he is the fourth best prospect in the draft. He likely would have been the guy we would have picked at 13, and he goes one pick before us. That's unfortunate. So the Giants are up. We have been pick sniped by the Red Sox, and now we've got to figure out what our backup plan is. In terms of the pitching prospects left, there's still a lot of good ones. Some of these guys are projected to go in later rounds, though, and I think the best pitching prospect left is Ken Shibuya. Yes, he's 23 years old, but age is just a number. Not like that, Wander Franco. Despite that, I think he has a really high ceiling along with somebody who's probably going to be pretty good right away. But I would rather pick a position player in the first round because I think it's easier to find pitchers down the board. There are a ton of pitchers who I think are going to be pretty good who we can get in the second round, the third round, and beyond. So in terms of position players we could look at, I think switch hitting shortstop Stuart Waddle could make a lot of sense. Good contact bat, really fast, pretty solid defensively. Brian Weber at second base is another guy. Our scouts don't seem to love him, but he's another really good contact hitter who I think can play pretty much anywhere in the infield. And if you're looking for more of a wild card pick, I think the Giants could surprise with a few other prospects projected to go quite a bit later. Power hitting first baseman Liam Patterson could be in consideration here. One of the best pure power bats in this class. If not him, maybe it's Derek Johnson, the 21-year-old outfielder from LSU. 
or Kyler Rodriguez, the big power-hitting Dominican outfielder who I think is one of the biggest hidden gems in this entire draft class. So with the 13th pick in the 2024 Major League Baseball Amateur Draft, the San Francisco Giants select Kyler Rodriguez, an 18-year-old left-handed hitting outfielder from the Dominican Republic. I think a lot of people might be confused or surprised by this pick because he's not projected to go until the third round. But I don't care about that. Projections do not matter in this game. If he is a good player, he will go way earlier than that number suggests. I feel like Kyler Rodriguez is not only a great prospect, but he fits what we are looking to build here in San Francisco. And if we wanted him, I knew we had to pick him in the first round. K-Rod is a very talented player who I think very well could stick in right field. His arm is inconsistent, but he's got raw arm talent. He's pretty good as a fielder. He's really fast, but we drafted him for his bat. From the left side of the plate, this guy absolutely rakes. Contact and plate skills are there, but they could use some work. The power, though, is his number one tool. He might be the best power-hitting prospect in this entire draft class against right-handed pitching and left-handed pitching. I really believe that this kid hits his ceiling. He's going to be one of the 5 to 10 best power hitters in Major League Baseball and is going to be a guy who can hit 35 plus home runs per season on a consistent basis. I get he wasn't projected to go until the third round, but I don't care. I think he's the best prospect on the board and I'm very excited that he is a San Francisco Giant. K-Rod piss missiles over McCovey Cove sounds pretty good to me. Let's go forward now as Ward Herzog goes to the Cubs, Brian Weber to the Mariners, and Ken Shibuya out of Oregon State goes to the Marlins. He was the next guy on our board, the 23-year-old left-handed pitching prospect, who I think is going to be really good despite his older age. Julio Benitez goes to the Brewers, Mason Lamb goes to the Rays, and the Mets select switch-hitting shortstop Stuart Waddle, another guy who we kind of looked at, but I felt like I didn't have enough information on him to pick him 13th overall. Ramon Ramirez goes to the Toronto Blue Jays. The Minnesota Twins are up next. They go with Fred Burke, who our scouts believed was a top 10 prospect in this draft class. Juan Pena goes to the Baltimore Orioles. The run on pitching continues. Ryan Delorier goes to the Dodgers. There's another pitcher. We'll get to see him in our division. Dwayne McMillan to the Atlanta Braves. He wasn't projected to go until pick 101. If teams like guys, they will reach on them early. Derek Johnson is off the board. Another guy who I really liked. He will be in our division, joining the San Diego Padres after leading the NCAA in home runs this year with the LSU Tigers. Johnny Mayberry to the Yankees, Pedro Roca to the Phillies, Liam Patterson to the Astros, another guy we were pretty high on, Anthony McKinnon to the Diamondbacks, and the defending world champion Rangers get another college outfielder with Robbie Cartwright out of North Carolina. Edgar Espinosa goes to the D-backs. Luis Gutierrez goes to the Ravens in the prospect promotion incentive round with those two teams having the rookie of the years last year. Now in competitive balance, round A. Melvin Sidelinker was a guy who we never got to scout, but I kind of wish we did. He ends up going to Cleveland. Freddie Boggs, a good pitching prospect, ends up with the Pirates. Pittsburgh's done a pretty good job so far. And now on to the second round. Now that we're out of round one, we're going to move a little bit faster. We're not going to look at every pick, and instead we're going to move a little bit quicker. Some notable picks here in the second round include Milt Wilkerson to the Rockies. He was the top guy on our board and would have been the pick had he fallen. He's a pitcher who really fits our criteria of types of guys we like. Unfortunately, he doesn't make it to our spot. Johnny Church to the Mets. That's a good pick. Walter Young to the Pirates. I think he's pretty good. Phil Sposato is a guy who we scouted late in the process, but we do really like. He ends up going to Cleveland. And then the last pick before us is Herschel Delahanty to the Red Sox. He was our scout's second best player left on the board. So that brings us here to pick 50. The second round selection here for the San Francisco Giants. A lot of pitchers left, and we got to scroll a little bit to find the position players. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. There is a name who sticks out like a sore thumb here, and that's Brad McKinnon. Our scouts view him as the 11th best player in the class. I don't think he's a natural fit in terms of what we look for with pitching prospects, but the talent might be too much to pass up. I think he is clearly the best pitching prospect left, so if we do go with a pitcher, it's got to be Brad McKinnon. What about possibly another position player? There are some good ones left. Ryan Saul, the catcher out of Towson, is a guy I really like. Good bat, solid defensively. I think he'll be able to stick behind the plate at catcher. 
Another name to watch out for is Elijah Warren, the second baseman out of Virginia Tech. Really good contact bat, somebody who I think could be at the top of the team's order if he hits his ceiling. Somebody who is a very sure thing, B potential, probably going to be rated in the 60s, and I think he's going to be a surefire major leaguer one day, even if he doesn't have an all-star ceiling. Some wild card picks include first baseman Kevin Martinez and Rex Lewis, both of whom are intriguing offensive options. Johnny Calvert and Russell Reed both have high ceilings. Reed in particular I like. The Giants did just pull a fast one on us in the last round. Could they do it again? With the 50th pick in the 2024 MLB Draft, the San Francisco Giants select Elijah Warren, a second baseman out of Virginia Tech. We will ultimately not opt for Brad McKinnon, but instead going with Warren. I didn't think McKinnon would make it this far. He did, and I was tempted, but I think Elijah Warren is the better fit for what we're looking for. A four-year starter with the Hokies, Warren has been a staple at the top of the order for Virginia Tech as a guy who can consistently hit for great contact, hitting over 350 in each of the last three seasons. His power has improved every season with the Hokies, and defensively, I think he's pretty solid. He probably does not have the range to be a shortstop long term, but I think he can play just about anywhere in the infield if you need him to. He's got a solid righty stroke who, again, I'm very confident will be a major leaguer one day. Maybe not an all-star, but this guy's going to be starting in this league for a long time, and if that's the type of player you're getting in the second round, then it's a great pick. I think there's more upside with Brad McKinnon, the pitcher, but I think the floor for him is a lot lower, and I think Warren is a better fit for what we're looking for. So Elijah Warren joins Kyler Rodriguez as the first two picks here in the 2024 draft to the San Francisco Giants. Interesting to not opt for a pitcher in the first couple of rounds. That likely means the Giants have some guys they like down the board who very well could be targets in the third round and beyond. One of those guys was Michael Bowe. He was picked by the Cubs. None of our other targets went in the second round, though. Russell Reed was the first pick in competitive balance round B. He goes to the Rays. Jesus Rodriguez was another guy I kind of liked. He ends up in Minnesota. Harmon Edwards is the first catcher off the board, although in my opinion, the best catching prospect is Ryan Saul, who's not going to have to wait too much later to hear his name off the board. He's going to Miami, joining the Marlins, who have had a really nice draft so far. In the compensatory round, the San Diego Padres will ultimately be the team who ends up with Brad McKinnon. And if we end up regretting this pick, well, Brad McKinnon's going to let us know because he's going to be in our division. The reason why I ultimately opted off of him in the second round is because I don't think he's a natural fit. Hits per nine is low, walks per nine is low, and he lacks control, which is a big issue for me. Had he fallen to the third round, I probably would have taken the swing on him, but I didn't view him as a guy who I was all that interested in before the third round. Johnny Calvert ends up going a couple picks before us, and ultimately the last guys to go are going to be Gregorio Diaz and Herb Hernandez. So we only have a minute to make this pick. Why did MLB The Show make it so after the second round you only get one minute? That means we've got to go quick here. There's a lot of pitchers still left on the board who I think are pretty good. Could the Giants ultimately opt for a position player again, though? With the 89th pick in the 2023 MLB Draft, the San Francisco Giants select Fernando Molina, a 23-year-old right-handed relief pitcher from the Dominican Republic and the University of North Carolina. The Giants finally get a pitcher, but it's not one of the starters. Molina did start at the University of North Carolina, generally only going around four to five innings per outing. I think this is somebody who, at worst, will probably be a lawn reliever, but we're going to try to develop his stamina and possibly turn him into a starter because I think he's got that type of upside. He's got four pitches, a running fastball, slider, curveball, and changeup. He's got really good off-speed stuff, and his fastball tops at 98. He throws very hard, and he's got good break on his pitches. Hits per nine is really good. Strikeouts per nine is really good. His walks per nine needs a lot of work, which is sort of the one thing that led me away from him. But every other aspect of his game, I really liked. At 23 years old, I would consider him to be a sure thing. His potential is going to be in the 80s. And I think this is somebody who's going to be in the bullpen probably by the end of next season. And hopefully, maybe he's a starter one day. All three players we've drafted so far are guys who we have had fully scouted. We've done a lot of work on these top three picks and feel that they are all fits for what we are trying to build here in San Francisco. Two of our top three picks are at least 22 years old. Age is just a number. I'm looking for good ball players. I don't care if you're 18 or if you're 23. If you can play, 
then we want you. Rex Lewis, the switch hitting first baseman, a guy we were kind of looking at, ends up going to the Chicago Cubs with the 93rd pick. Eddie Brito is another guy, kind of similar to Molina, as a lawn reliever, starter, hybrid. He goes to the Marlins. Darren Whitaker is a guy our scouts didn't like, but I feel like I'm pretty high on. He goes to the Brewers. Kevin Martinez, another position player we liked. He ends up in Tampa Bay. And now into the fourth round now. The top pitcher left on our board was lefty Sean Ortiz, who goes a couple picks before us to the Pirates. That's kind of unfortunate. Eddie Sanchez goes to the Cleveland Guardians, just a couple picks away. The Tigers get Julio Enriquez, a second baseman. And the Boston Red Sox, who have had one of the best drafts so far, pick Dave Ventura, our scouts' top player left on the board. Ortiz was the second guy on the board when he was picked, so this might throw a little bit of a monkey wrench into our plans if we were looking at one of the pitchers, which ultimately is the direction we're going to go with. But the question is who? Will it be the righty from Canada, J.J. Green, or the lefty from Mexico, Scott Rios? With the 119th pick in the 2024 MLB Draft, the San Francisco Giants select Scott Rios, an 18-year-old left-handed pitcher from Mexico. So ultimately, the Giants will go with Rios over Green, and the reason is upside. Scott Rios has a higher ceiling, so I figured, why not take the bigger swing? Now, Rios has a very low floor as well. There's a chance this guy never pitches a game in the majors. There's also a chance that he ends up being really, really good. Along with the upside, I think he's a better pure fit for what we're looking for in a pitching prospect as opposed to J.J. Green. Rios' best per nine attributes are his walks per nine and his hits per nine. He throws pretty hard. His control is a little bit inconsistent, but he's 18 years old. He's got time to develop it. He's got four pitches, a two-seam fastball, slider, sinker, and changeup. His fastball only tops at 95, but his sinker, which I think is his best pitch, tops at 94. His off-speed stuff is really good as well, and I think the ceiling with this kid is really impressive. We're going to have to develop him, but if he can reach what his potential is, man, I think he could be good. So Scott Rios is the pick for us here in the fourth round, and as we continue to get later and later in the draft, there's a lot less guys who we have scouted and a lot less guys who we would consider to be good prospects. So because of that, we're really going to have to dig here with our final two picks and hope we can find a diamond in the rough in somebody who's been completely overlooked through the entire pre-draft process. Interestingly, the other starting pitcher we looked at, J.J. Green, is still on the board here in the fifth round. So if we really want, we could still get him here, or we could go back to a position player after going with back-to-back -back pitchers. With the 149th pick in the 2024 MLB Draft, the San Francisco Giants select Federico Casillas, an 18-year-old catching prospect from the Dominican Republic. Casillas is another guy who is super raw, but has a sky-high ceiling. We really have not scouted Casillas at all. But I think there's a chance, albeit a really small chance, that there is a star hidden underneath this raw 18-year-old. He has shown a ton of upside and a ton of flashes behind the plate and offensively, but there's also a chance he might be really, really raw. His overall rating could be as low as 18. Now, I've never seen a player drafted with that low of a rating. So I think it's going to be probably somewhere in the 40s. But the max potential with him is 97. Again, it's a slim chance. But I think there is a chance that this guy could be really good and end up being one of the biggest steals in this draft. So that'll wrap up the fifth round here. And again, the Canadian pitcher, J.J. Green, has still not been taken. Our scouts think he's a top 80 player in the class and has been their highest rated player on the board since the third round. He ultimately would make it to our sixth round pick. So while our scouts really like him, and I've gone against our scouts' opinions today, there might be a reason why he's falling. Do we overthink it or do we go with the Canadian? With the 179th pick in the 2024 MLB Draft, the San Francisco Giants select... J.J. Green, the 18-year-old righty from Canada. Our scouts have been pounding the table for this guy since the third round. And finally, they'll get their wish. While I'm not as high on Green as the rest of our scouting department is, I do think this is a really talented prospect. And here in the sixth round, I think this is very good value. His breaking ball is by far his best asset. He's got a changeup, slider, and curveball 
all of which can get close to 90 miles an hour, along with a four-seamer that tops at 95. His per nine attributes are pretty solid, minus his hits per nine, which is a big weakness. And because of that, I don't think he's as natural the fit as some of the other pitchers who we liked a little bit more that were rated lower by our scouts. But here in the sixth round, this is really good value. Our scouts wanted to pick him in the third round, and I don't think he's as sure the thing is Fernando Molina. I don't think he's as good of a natural fit or has a higher ceiling than Scott Rios. But in round six, why not? So J.J. Green will be the final pick of the day here to the San Francisco Giants. And with that, our draft is concluded. Three position players, two starters, and one reliever is going to be the draft hall for us here in Season 1. We came in with a very clear plan of this draft and executed. Our top three picks were all guys identified as gold star prospects. And what I mean by that is guys who I did not want to lead the draft without. Three players who I think are outstanding fits with Kylo Rodriguez, Elijah Warren, and then Fernando Molina. I'm happy that I was able to get all three. I went into the draft expecting those guys to be our top three picks unless we had somebody fall in the first round unexpected. After that, it's about swings for upside. If one of our final three picks, Rios, Casillas, or Green, ends up making a substantial impact at the major league level, then I think that will end up being a big win for us. And that's going to wrap up today's episode. Let me know what you thought of our draft down below in the comments section. Next time around, we will be going through the All-Star break and making it up to the trade deadline. I'm really excited to build around these prospects going forward, and I hope you guys are excited to see their journeys unfold in this series. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.